Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Daily Crypto News. And today, we got some crazy news on VeChain and Chainlink, and also a little bit of news on Ripple and XRP. Now, guys, put in the comment section your top one coin. So if you love two coins, too bad. Just put your number one in the comment section down below. And let's compare. All right. Maybe also put Y so people can understand. Otherwise, just put BTC or XRP or VET down below and we will understand. And I think that also counts. But yes, the first article of today, VeChain. That's why our governance model is better than Ethereum's and Bitcoin's. VeChain's chief scientist, Peter Zhao, has highlighted the advantages of the governance model of the VeChain Thor blockchain compared to that of Bitcoin and that of Ethereum. VeChain's governance model is made up of three components or elements with different decision-making capabilities. To quote, VeChain's governance model has a robust detailed design utilizing a mutually reinforcing mix of legal, cultural, market, and code elements to help steer the collective. And down below, the individual voting power varies in relation to the number of tokens a user has and the time he has kept them. The minimum vote for any one user is 1 and the maximum number of votes is held by the authority masternodes as shown in the following chart. And here you can see how the voting exactly works. If you really, you know, you don't understand, you probably don't really care about the voting or, you know, about the whole system anyway. However, the chief scientist of each and explained that the steering committee board makes decisions about all emergencies in the network. And in this sense, the members have the possibility to take temporary measures but decisions with greater weight still require the votes of the stakeholders, even if they are only approved for a limited period of time. Some have always or often said that that is a scary part about VeChain. However, I see it as something good as, you know, short term decisions have to be made and otherwise it can really, really turn out to be bad. However, we've actually heard them talk about this a lot more often. Now, my personal take on all of this is... We know VeChain is better for a couple of reasons exactly at this point. And I guess one of the most prominent points right there is that, well, Bitcoin has no real use case. Ethereum is only good as a platform, but it's really not that scalable. And VeChain, I guess, takes up those boxes where it is useful and it is really, really, really scalable with some insane partnerships already to scale it just to another dimension. And in terms of governance, it's always a difficult issue, right? Because what do you consider good governance? I mean, like Plato or Plato and a lot of others have said, it's really, really difficult to go over what is really just and what is really the best type of governance as we will all disagree on exactly what we expect and what will be, you know, the best because maybe you like the best to be you know they decide on the short term but the the holders decide on the longer term on the contrary you may decide you know screw the holders they're guys with money but they're not the guys with the brain and with the vision so they shouldn't have a vote on the contrary another person will say well short-term decisions shouldn't be made by a team or anything like that it should just be the stakeholders because well they got the money, they own the system, and even though they might not have the vision, they're entitled to it because, well, that's fair and decentralized. It's a pretty difficult one, and that's why I'm always, again, soft with these articles as well, as it's pretty difficult to find out exactly what is better. Binance US lists VeChain. The developers of the VeChain have released VeChain Thor version 1.3.4, which enables improved P2P communications in the network, and Binance.us announced the listing of VeChain Thor a few hours ago. Or actually, VeChain, I should say, VET. VThor token. It's not VeChain Thor, it's a VThor token. Uh, VeChain itself, I think it was actually already listed before, right? So maybe the title here doesn't really. I guess fit. I don't, I don't remember now. I don't know if, if vet itself was already listed a little while ago and now it's just the listing of V chain Thor. So vet hole, if you guys know what I'm talking about, then look it up. Or if they did both at once now, and this was just a, the second of the two tweets. 
I mean, it doesn't really matter. It, it got listed right now. Everybody's happy about it. So I guess we're all good, right? Because I think it, I think it was just VTHO that's being added right now. And VTHO was already on there. I, I think we reported on it earlier. But personally, I don't use Binance US. I just use Binance itself. Um, but yeah, it doesn't really matter in the end. Prices don't go up from this type of stuff anymore. If the coin is already too big, it doesn't really matter that much. And uh, with VeChain, that would have been the case. Now move over into Chainlink, because that coin, again, in terms of price, has not been doing too amazing, same as VeChain. But in terms of adoption, they've really done themselves a very good job right now. Chainlink integration brings data feeds to Binance's DeFi project. It has to do with Binance, yes, yes, yes. But more and more things in the space have to do with Binance nowadays, as they're a pretty, pretty heavy authority. So, yeah. Binance is entering in the decentralized finance space game following an integration of its Binance Smart Contract BSC platform with data provider Chainlink. According to a blog post shared with Coindesk, the collab was announced Thursday and the price didn't really budge from any of that anymore. However, a partnership between Chainlink and Binance right now, it kind of reaffirms our question of can Chainlink be a scam? Well, not really, because if, if any crypto project out there uh, could, could see through scams, it would most likely be Binance out of all of them. And that's just my personal opinion, but Binance is working with coins, with cryptocurrencies every single day. All right, and if they, those guys over at Binance, can't spot a pretty simple crypto scam, then uh, none of us will. So us with all our theorizing, we most likely would not spot a scam anyway, then if they, Binance themselves, can't even spot it. So the only thing could be that they're playing under one hat, you know, where Binance and Chainlink, they, they agreed to scam everybody because some are always claiming that Binance is also a scam. But I'm like, you know, Chainlink is doing pretty damn solid right now. These partnerships don't kind of come out of thin air. And it's about the fundamentals that they've got themselves pretty set up with right now. But a report by Coindesk, Binance released its smart contract platform white paper in April. The exchange said the platform was not meant to compete with Ethereum, the largest DApp in the space, or DApp platform in the space, but perhaps complement it. For example, BSC projects are interoperable with Ethereum virtual machine. And uh, that is something that Tron, <laughs> we had a big discussion with before. Yet Binance did list numerous metrics such as transaction speed, latency, and scalability under its hybrid DPoS and POA, which is proof of authority, consensus algorithm that would beat out Ethereum in the white paper, or at least in the paper itself. Binance did not return for questions, and that might be partially due to them not having an answer ready, them not wanting to come out in this section yet, and maybe them not being able to explain themselves yet with why they've added all those things when they do not want to compete but just compliment. Uh, however, I think an easy response would always be, I think people want to know these numbers, all right? Even though they might just be a compliment, I think people want to know exactly what they're up to and what they can do, which I would understand myself. All right, then actually one thing I wanted to show you guys first was a link that is taken down for some reason. Uh, it might be just because the link was misspelled or something like that, but it might also be because it's really gone. Can I get news slash Deutsche Telekom's T-Systems is now a Chainlink node operator. This article was posted on Cointelegraph a little while ago, but apparently got deleted and, well, I couldn't find it once more. So there's two options. One... They changed the name, and I can't find it right now. Second is there was something wrong with this article. They got some wrong info or something along those lines, which I really am interested in. Four additional projects integrate Chainlink technology this week alone. Quick summary on that. The Chainlink team continues to seal partnerships on a weekly basis, and this week, four projects have integrated Link technology. The continual growth of the Chainlink ecosystem translates to real-life use cases, and Lynx's value stands to benefit from the continual growth. Now, one thing I should mention, just straight out the bat right there, is the continual growth for Chainlink is one of the, the big factors of the growth of Chainlink themselves in terms of price. Because what you get if you get partnership after partnership after partnership to this extent, I mean, if they would have gotten some small partnerships, 
meh. But with so much positive news and just people also taking it really, really to the heart. Well, yeah, it's not that strange that the price keeps rising even when other coins are doing bad. However, having said that, to start, Reflexor has successfully integrated Chainlink's Ethereum to USD price reference to power the REI testnet bond, also known as Generalized Ethereum Bond. And secondly, Chainlink's Eng to Ethereum price reference feed is live on the Link mainnet, and gaming developers can use the information when minting or exchanging engine-based digital assets. Thirdly, or actually, yeah, thirdly, T-Systems has joined the Chainlink ecosystem and will be helping to secure Chainlink's Oracle network. T-Systems also facilitates real-world adoption and advancement of blockchain technology. And last but not least, or fourthly, Firma Chain is integrating Chainlink technology to create more seamless digital contracts, and all of this is just good, good, good stuff. I can't say anything bad about it, and I'm really, really happy to see then, oh, this is actually for next video. I don't want to show you guys what I, uh, I'm thinking about that just quite yet. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, by the way, if you want to know more about this crypto stuff. I do it every single day. So, uh, again, you're not going to miss anything on this channel. So make sure you subscribe. It's going to be worth it. I, 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 tr I know I, I guarantee it to you. Or I guarantee you it. Or however you say that. And by the way, also make sure you press the like button to help out with the YouTube algorithm. I think it helps out a ton. Now, I just wanted to say here, if you enjoy XRP or RIP or anything like that, make sure you check this out. Because these are the most popular or most known tweets from Brad Gollinghouse. And reading through this, it really inspires you to become a better person. At least, that's what it did for me. He just had one kind of interesting one that I, I guess didn't make me a better person, which was about, I think, a sports... Um, it was at this side here. Oh, here it is from the Kansas J. Hawks. Hawks. Because that one is a, you know, a little bit more of a useless one in terms of, you know, just, I guess, money and <laughs> finance. But the rest of these tweets and, and quotes are just really, really solid. And um, it, it, it's something you can really just read and then think about and maybe reflect upon. It might help you out as a person. Just this website as a whole, Brainy Quote, is really, really a solid one if you just want to think for a little second. Think about life. Think about choices. Think about the future. As for example, governments aren't going away, banks aren't going away, is the truth, all right? We might think the governments are going to become less important, it might be, or that governments might mess up and people are going to go against it, like full anarchy. We might think so, but before that really happens, we're really, really far into the future, and the chance is pretty damn small as banks and governments do a lot more than meets the eye. <laughs> then, breakout coming. XRP ready to break key resistance barrier. And I just want to put a couple of you guys out of your little bubble by saying, well, if crypto really, really wanted to do so, they most likely would have broken out by now. And that is just for the next week or so, because the 22nd, as we all know, was one of the biggest days in crypto by far. And I just, let me see if I get the article again. This one right here. I just want to show you guys once more that this day, the 22nd, I don't think we'll ever forget. And here's another one. Oh, it's actually the same one. I was already like, where did they go? This is just the 22nd of July was one of the biggest days in crypto. And it's going to change the future of gen the future generations, but uh, most likely, right? Generations of crypto I'm talking about. Rip on XRP will benefit most from the OCC decision pack global CMO. David Gogstein welcomes the decision by the Office of the Controller of the Currency and predicts new, new all-time highs for XRP. Ripple is more prepared to work as with banks than any other digital asset and will be the biggest winner, according to Gogstein. And now, my thoughts on that is, at first, I was really kind of confused with what exactly the Office of the Controller of the Currency really, really does. So I went to check them out a little bit further, check out all there is to find. I, I think I have a pretty, pretty good concept of exactly how they've been working. I've heard about them before, but really not in a crypto sense. I, I really didn't know they were too involved with it. I thought it was just, I don't know, I, I didn't really just think about it too much. You guys know what I mean here, where you know something, but you haven't thought about it too much. You guys know. Um, and that was the same with this office. However, it made me think, right? It made me think about all related things where, 
Well, the custody is, is what the banks have gotten, right? The right to custody, really. However, which which coin would they pick the most or which one would be picked the most? I'm going to be assuming it's the one that's much or the most conform with banks, which is either stable coins or a coin like XRP. Because, well, XRP, like you can also find here in within Brent Garlinghouse's tweets, it is really to be conform with the system. And here they also said the revolution of blockchain is going to be uh, or not going to happen outside the system. It's going to be from within the system. It's the truth. We all know it. Outside of the system could work, but it would take so much more time as, again, you won't see these partners really, really adopting it heavily as it's all outside the system. If it happens within the system, you can see billions or even trillions of dollars flowing through there with some more ease and with some more determination as it is all allowed and not like a sketchy place where you all have to come together and, you know, maybe meet in private and whatnot. No, it's really just regulatory cleared it's just all black on white and everybody knows what they're up to instead of just some fiddling and, and guessing and whatnot which to me is really really positive and I, I definitely think this is one of the most positive days for crypto ever and especially right now for xrp where they're at a really 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 ridiculously positive spot because well as he thinks and i think as well they will most likely benefit the most from from all of this. Another point to make, by the way, is two, actually two points. First of all, is that Brad Gollinghouse has come on CNBC and a couple other places so often, really representing crypto and, and XRP specifically, to tons and tons of people. And a second one, uh, I would say, is with all of these CBDCs and central banks and whatnot, very often do they mention Ripple and what they do and sometimes even XRP, and that's something we shouldn't forget. All right, in my previous video, I reminded you guys to never forget about CBDCs and all their connections to Ripple and XRP, but really you shouldn't. You should not forget about the connection because that might one day determine whether or not it can go to 10 or $10,000 per coin. That's just an exaggeration. It's something to think about though. All right, guys, but that, that was it for this video. Hopefully, you guys all enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section down below how you like the slower talking. I've really been trying my best here to keep it as, as clear as possible, but it's not my style, all right? I normally talk a little bit faster like this, but let me know in the comment section. I'll see you guys again in another crypto video. Take care, everybody.